One month after the parliamentary election in Iraq, discussions over government formation have stalled as the results themselves have been called into question. Experts believe what's needed is a grand coalition of all the major and minor parties so Iraq does not descend into a sectarian hell that it was subjected to in the years following the US-led invasion in 2003. What's important now is for Iraq to have internal unity among all political coalitions and factions, among all various religious and ethnic sects, and having good relations with all of its neighbors. Uh, Iraq needs good relations with Iran, with Turkey. It needs a strong anti-terror alliance with Syria. It needs all these things in order, frankly, to survive. So that ought to be the goal of any politician, even those who are known for provoking various things internally. This isn't the time for that kind of thing. What's needed is unity. Amid allegations of fraud, last week the outgoing parliament ordered a manual recount of about 10 million votes, along with the replacement of members of the independent higher electoral commission with judges. But after a fire broke out in Baghdad ballot box storage on Sunday, there is further potential for chaos. While the country is on the verge of a political crisis, Muqtada al sadd and Hadi al-Amiri, who won first and second place respectively in the May election, are going to combine forces. The alliance is an attempt to bring some temporary stability to the country. Al Sadr's coalition, yes, it won the most votes, but I consider it more of a protest vote, where, where Al Amiri was coming forward with a positive message of rebuilding a post US UK invasion Iraq, a post Daesh Iraq. The Al Sadr coalition was more of a protest vote. It had all sorts of strange parties in it, including the very controversial, to put it lightly, Iraqi Communist Party. And if that party were to somehow form with a few little ethno nationalist parties and sectarian religious parties, parties on the side, it could have led to a wider schism. If the political deadlock lingers on, the enemies of stability in the region will be the only ones to benefit. Given the ethno-religious diversity of the Iraqi population, in case of a nationwide crisis, the country would be in danger of being splintered into small parts. There would be an isolated Kurdish enclave in the north that would quickly resume its alliance with the United States and it could more dangerously act as an Israeli base to wage attacks on all of the neighboring countries, including and especially Iran. Then you could see areas around north, from the north of Baghdad to around Mosul and through to Kirkuk being a kind of Sunni country that would be formed on a religious basis with some uh, Sunni Arabs, they would be the majority, and then a minority of Sunni Turkoman. Then you could see a Shia majority country from the south of Baghdad to areas of Basra, and this would be a clear Iranian partner, but would therefore incur further wrath from the United States. And then you could see Anbar acting as a kind of Saudi protectorate in the West. The short-term solution to the ongoing crisis is perhaps an all-party government. After all, Iraq is not yet out of the woods when it comes to Daesh. The terrorist group can re-emerge from any deep crack in the nation.